Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new quadcopter from Hubsan. This is the X4 Storm quadcopter. It comes in two versions. One that comes also with an LCD display with a built-in DVR and the version that I've got is the smaller one which only comes with the quadcopter and the radio controller. Inside this box we're getting the quadcopter, the radio controller, the user manual and also this box with spare parts and inside we're getting a couple of spare screws, a screwdriver, a USB charging cable for the battery and one set of spare propellers. This quadcopter is featuring 10mm brushed motors, a 5.8GHz VTX, you can see its antenna here on the back and it supports only one channel. Later on I'm going to scan for the channel and tell you which one it is so you can see that your goggles are compatible with this channel. In addition we have this camera on the front that also records 720p videos to the micro SD slot which is located here. It supports up to 32GB micro SD cards. And on the top we can find the LiPo battery. This is a 2S LiPo battery with a capacity of 710 mAh and it's rated to be a 30C LiPo battery. If you are struggling to find spare batteries, I can confirm that also this battery from GNB is compatible with this quadcopter. You will have to squeeze it in, but it's not a problem. And in order to power it up, it uses the ballast connector. So just make sure that this cable is out of the way. Now it's properly secured and you can just power up the quadcopter by connecting this ends over here. The downside of course that this battery is only 450 mAh LiPo battery whereas the original one is a 710 mAh one. The distance between the motors is about 127.3 mm. Its front dimensions are about 106 mm and its length is 109.6 millimeters. The frame itself is made out of carbon. The thickness of the bottom plate is 1.8 millimeters and the thickness of these side plates is 0.6 millimeters. This quadcopter weighs 86.2 grams without the battery and after adding the battery it weighs 117.4 grams. The remote controller is operated by four AAA batteries. In order to see the LED indicators of the remote controller, you will have to pop this thing up. Then we can see here the power on and off LED and also this LED indicator that states if the quadcopter is bound or not. In addition, you can use this mount in order to mount the FPV screen, but you can also use it if you want to mount another screen or even just an Android device that's connected to an OTG receiver, which means you can mount the OTG receiver on the back connect your phone and then you can fly FPV using this method if you don't have FPV goggles. This remote controller already comes bound to the quadcopter but in case you want to bind it again you will have to press the camera button while holding the power on button. Then you can see that this LED indicator is rapidly flashing. Turn on the quadcopter and now you can see that this LED indicator turned solid and it means that the quadcopter is bound. Now we can just arm the quadcopter by holding both sticks on this direction and you can see that now the quadcopter is armed. If you want to disarm it, just repeat this position and now the quadcopter is disarmed. In order to control the headlight, just press this button over here. You can see that now it's turned off, now it's on again. In order to snap a photo, press this button, you can see that this LED indicator flashed once and if you want to record a video, press the video button and now you can see this LED indicator is flashing. If you want to stop the recording process, press this button again and now the flashing stopped. By the way, this video is going to be saved to the micro SD card here and also you're going to see an overlay on the screen that will tell you if you are recording a video or not. On the top right of the radio controller, we can find the aileron trim buttons. And finally, if you want to perform calibration, place the quadcopter on an even surface, hold the left stick to the right, and then just move the roll into these positions, left and right, left and right, left and right, until you see these LED indicators that are changing. And now when they are solid again, it means that the calibration process was finished successfully. Pressing the right stick will toggle between fast mode, which is indicated by double beep, 
and slower mode which is indicated by one beep. Pressing the left stick will enter return to home mode and then the quadcopter is going to get back to the direction where it took off from. It's not recommended and I don't recommend to use this feature. Now this remote controller also offers a sort of uh, telemetry. When the battery of the quadcopter is low, it's going to start beeping. And also when the red signal is disconnected, the remote controller is going to beep. And also the quadcopter has a strong buzzer on the bottom and it's going to start beeping like that when the battery is low and also when it got disconnected from the radio controller. Now I'm going to perform a scan and tell you which channel the VTX is set to. And the best signal was received at 59.45, which is according to my frequency table, band E, channel 8. Now in case you are wondering, this quadcopter should be compatible with the jumper which uses the deviation protocol, however I couldn't bind my remote controller to this quadcopter, so take it into consideration that it might not work for you as well. I wish I could fly outdoors on my test flight also with this remote controller because it should offer much more precise control than this simple remote controller. The next thing I'm going to do is to take it outdoors and see how it performs and in the end of the video I'm going to give you my conclusion. flying the Hubson H122D was fun, it flew pretty fast and this is definitely not an indoor flyer so don't fly it at home, it's going to be hard for you to control it and I recommend to fly it only outdoors. Controlling it with this remote controller wasn't that precise and I felt that if I could control it with my jumper ready controller it could have been much better but probably most of the people that are going to get this set as a beginner set are not going to have another ready controller and this is the only one that they're going to use in order to fly this quadcopter. The range was about 100 meters or so and the FPV range was greater than the range of the radio controller so you're going to lose radio before you're going to lose the picture so take it into consideration don't get too far with it but the strong buzzer that is located here is a great feature and it helped me find this quadcopter when I lost it anyway 100 meters is not a long range so I don't think you're going to lose this quadcopter unless it's going to get stuck on a tree or something like that and this quadcopter does not have acro mode which I think is a disadvantage and this is probably one of the reasons that if you are debating where to get this set or the Ishin Q90C I think that the Ishin Q90C is a little bit better because it will also help you to practice acro mode whereas this quadcopter only flies at horizontal mode so it's going to self stabilize itself it's not perfect for FPV but I think it will still give you a good FPV experience 
As for the propellers, although I've seen complaints online that they just got disconnected, for me they worked well and I stayed attached during all my test flight without any problems. Finally having a built-in DVR is also a nice feature and the video that was recorded of course to this micro SD card was better than the one I recorded on my FV goggles. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.